Hey, just a quick uh, update for roster. Um, Jack Doyle will be out for the game. Uh, other than that, it was a good week of practice. Uh, looking forward to the first game in Lucas Oil. Um, you know, with our limited fans there, I feel like we're ready. feel like we'll be ready for that environment. That's what our two scrimmages down there were, uh, you know, with limited or no people in there. So feel like we'll be prepared for all that stuff. Um, but just looking forward to an opportunity to bounce back against a really good opponent in the Vikings. And, uh, you know, first game at Lucas Oil, that, that's an exciting time for us. All right, we'll start with Kevin Bowen. Hey, Frank. Um, hey, Kev. Julian Blackman have a chance to play on Sunday, or is it still trying to get him ramped up in practice? Yeah, we're still evaluating. You know, he was limited all week, um, you know, making good progress. Uh, we'll, we'll just see how he responds over the next few uh, couple days and just still evaluating that. Phil B. Hey, Coach. Um, Wondering, just generally speaking, uh, how much or how often does a game go according to plan and you stick to your plan? And how much of uh, the challenge is you guys as coaches having to adjust on the fly and trying to match which with their coaches? You know, I think things – every game I'd say, you know, as far as what you're calling, I mean, you're not changing what you have on the call sheet. You have – you know, if we have 100 plays on the call sheet, though, you know, we're not just pulling things out of the air. What we look, what you look for offensively is, you know, are they doing anything different? Are they playing? Are they emphasizing one coverage over what they've been doing? Um, and then we might alter it that way. But for the most part, you know, you have everything on that call sheet that you know you'll need against the inventory of what they have. Same thing goes on defense and special teams. Um, you know, we we're prepared against these systems. We know, you know, what's in their inventory. Now, what's a, what are they going to emphasize? What's the flow of the game, game going like? And then you adapt according there. But I would say for the most part, it never feel – it always feels like, hey, this is – it's a normal game flow. You're making micro adjustments as you go. Thank you. Joe Erickson. Frank, uh, what's going on with Michael Pittman's toe? Um, you know, just had a little incident uh, yesterday in practice. So, you know, we just got to see how that responds over the next 48 hours. Mike Chapel. Yeah, Frank, we, we, we love hypotheticals. Now you've got two of your pass catching tight ends down. Uh, is it likely you go into a game with two tight ends or, or is the practice squad a likely possibility? Yeah, we're evaluating all those scenarios. Um, you know, we have comp- – We've said from the beginning of the year that, that our practice squad, every everybody here, we feel like can play winning football. So we got to keep all those options open and see what's you know and do what's best for us. You know, again with the game plan that we have, given all the roster considerations. You guys know. I mean, it's a it's a comp, it's a spider web. You know, you pull on one part and every part moves. So those are decisions that you hold. That your Chris and I are talking about those all during the week with the staff what's in the game plan, how is it going to apply, who's on the roster, who can we move up. There's so much more flexibility that this year that that helps. So we're weighing all those options. Quick follow-up, Frank. Is Jack a one-game thing, or do you think this may linger? Well, I mean, he's doing a good job. I think he's making good progress, but it's just too early to tell. Um, you know, we're, we're hopeful, but we, don't, we really don't know at this point. I mean, you know, I think at the outset it was we were thinking more than that, and then – if you get anything better than that, great. But we're not counting on that at this point. And there's really no reason for us to project that at this point, right? Um, let's just get through this weekend and then see where he's at the beginning of next week. Thanks, Frank. Jim, Jim Milo. Hey, Frank. I just was uh, wondering about the next the next two tight ends up. I mean, this would be a big opportunity for Mo. And then how do you feel like uh, Noah has progressed, you know, given that he hasn't been here for that long? Yeah, excited for Mo. Uh, we got a lot of confidence in Mo. He'll step right up and and, and fill the role and play the role well. Uh, Noah's really done well in limited time. Um, he's very smart. He's tough. He's very versatile. I mean, you know, he can, you know, he can kind of play a little bit of Y, a little bit of F. Um, he's a good route runner. Good hands. Uh, it's a short sample size, but what we've seen so far, we really like and. Uh, Excited for him. He's done a really good job. Jason Michael's done a good job getting him ready, but really Noah's done a good job getting ready, learning the offense very quickly and feeling comfortable, you know, where we have confidence with him in there. 
Just a quick follow. Yep. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned that he coming from Philadelphia, he was pretty familiar with kind of what you guys were planning. Did, did that kind of bear itself out over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, totally. Uh, well, I don't know if it was that or just he's really smart because it seemed to make he seemed to make the transition pretty seamlessly. We'll go two more. Stephen Holder. Well, actually, Chap and Jim basically took my two questions, so that's fine. Um, I, I guess the only thing I would ask is um, it, the tight ends are such a big part of of what you do in your scheme, and and certainly Jack is you know a guy who almost never comes off the field. So how what, to what extent does this impact what you can call? Uh, even though you you feel like you have some depth, it, clearly you lean a lot on Jack. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I mean. It is about the players, um, and when you design plays and when you're thinking about plays, you're thinking about them with certain players in mind. So, you know, Jack is just such a money tight end. I mean, you just know you can count on him to run a good route. You can count on him to understand leverage and spacing, all those things that we talk about. Um, but, you know, we, we just got a lot of – he's not the only guy, right? I mean, so – if, if Jack is that guy, it doesn't mean that the other guys who are filling in for him are like, you know, not on the, in the same zip code. They're all in the same zip code. Um, so you got little tweaks, you know, with Mo in there. Now, you know, we might emphasize a couple of the little things with Mo in there as opposed to Jack being in there. Um, stuff like that. Those are, those are the kind of little micro adjustments that you make that I don't really think are that big of a deal. And to your point, Stephen, you know, our, our offensive scheme is really – tight end centric in a lot of ways. Um, but I really think the guys we got are going to be able to function very well and give us the plays that we need in those areas. Okay, last one, Kevin Bowen. Frank, what did you see from Reese Fountain that uh, had you guys bringing him up to the 53? Reese is explosive. Uh, he had a really nice practice out there today as well. Um, made two really spectacular catches. Um, you know, Reese, Reese – He's explosive off the ball. He's continued to work hard. It's really a credit to him what he's come, the injury that he's come back from. So, um, you know, we knew when when he got put on the practice squad that there'd be a chance, you know, that he'd eventually be up. Um, so this is – we'll just see how it goes for him. Well, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see who's active. we got to see how everybody plays out physically here, you know, with a couple wide receivers dinged up a little bit. Uh, we just had to get – it just made a lot of sense to get him up and – get him prepared.